when we came to work that day, uh, we were aware that there had been this shooting at the Inland Regional Center in San Bernardino. And we were not asked to assist with anything that they had going on, so we were just preparing to handle the calls for service in our city. But knowing that that had taken place and that the suspects were still outstanding, um, I instructed the members of my team to be prepared to deal with, uh, if they showed up somewhere in Redlands, um, but also to deal with the high volume of calls that we were already getting driving around in my patrol car on the street and I was flagged down by a uh, plainclothes narcotics officer from the San Bernardino Police Department who told me that they had located the suspects from the shooting at the IRC but they needed a marked police car to help stop the suspect vehicle. He told me that they had gotten on the freeway and that they were headed towards San Bernardino uh, and so myself and some of my partners from the Redlands Police Department jumped on the freeway and followed him down the road to where the suspect vehicle uh, had been stopped in traffic on Tippecanoe in San Bernardino. And so I was the first marked unit that got behind the suspect vehicle and attempted to pull them over. And uh, a pursuit ensued um, that ended in a big shootout. And I was involved in the, in the shootout, stopping the terrorists from San Bernardino. Uh, in my mind, as I was driving and calling this out on the radio, I was picturing how it was going to end, and um, turns out I was right. I thought, because they weren't going super fast, they weren't trying to get away. At a certain point, they're gonna stop. Two people are gonna jump out with assault rifles and start shooting at the police cars, and we were gonna have to defend ourselves. So in my mind, I was thinking, where is the safest place for me to be once that happens? Um, and that's kind of behind my car to put the most metal and plastic and fabric and everything else between me and their, and their bullets. And because I had thought about that, and I, had, I was confident in my abilities and the training that I'd received and confident in the abilities of the people that I worked with that I knew were right there with me. I never felt alone. One of the challenges that we experienced out there was the fact that there were explosive devices. Apparently one of the suspects had thrown one from the vehicle during the pursuit and it ended up behind where a lot of the police officers had stopped at the end. Uh, there had also been explosive devices found at the IRC during the initial attack, so that's a concern for first responders and others. And you have to be concerned about the backdrop, the people that are behind the car that you're shooting at, and the people that are behind the suspect as he walked across the street or moved across the street towards the other officers. The fact that the officers showed a lot of restraint and were very uh, careful about their targets and what they were shooting at, over 400 bullets were fired by over 20 officers that were out there in that gunfight and about 80 rounds were fired by the two suspects and the fact that really the only casualties were the cars uh, and the road and the suspects um, speaks volumes about the professionalism uh, of, the, of the officers and the law enforcement officers that responded to that situation. Uh, I know the officers that I've spoken to that were involved in that incident, the shootout on San Bernardino, um, all of them seem to, to be doing fine and are back to work and, and uh, you know, handling things very well. I can't speak about the officers that responded to the initial scene at the IRC. Um, I have spoken to several of those officers and, and I've heard firsthand what they experienced and what they encountered and I can't imagine it. Uh, I am very grateful that if I had to be involved in this incident, that it was uh, with the shootout with the suspects and not responding to the IRC and seeing the, the chaos and carnage that those guys encountered uh, when they first got there. I imagine that is very hard uh, to, to deal with and to live with. Is there are reports of an active shooter situation in San Bernardino, California. Listen, about it happened at the Inland Regional Center, you know, which is a... With uh, multiple people wounded, they've set a triage... Yeah. So we're getting lots of reports, Greta, that indicate this is not yet over. Clearly, A nation grappling once again with scenes of bloody chaos after another mass shooting. I worked as a plan checker for San Bernardino County, assisting them with both reviewing plans and then conducting the subsequent final inspections and preliminary inspections as far as they related to construction. 
When I was here a couple weeks ago, I was helping out with food facility um, inspections, so the routine inspections, also some complaint investigations, and I was working at a ranch in Cucamonga at the time. Uh, this time around, I'll be here for about a week and I'll be doing pool inspections in Victorville. So. Initially, our job was to meet with uh, public health, San Marino public health uh, officials and uh, get their priorities and, and uh, integrate that with department priorities and develop a plan to manage that workload. Okay, it's in San Bernardino County, I am actually here as a supervisor. So I am supervising contract employees that the county has brought in to assist them with uh, meeting their you know, inspection goals and their responding to their complaints and things like that. They had quite a few people that they needed to have trained and we were more than happy to help. We trained them based on what program they were hired into. So if they were hired in to be a district inspector, we trained them on foods and pool inspections. And if they were hired into one of the specialty programs like land use, we trained them on solid waste or medical waste. When I went to San Bernardino, they needed assistance with routine inspections, food facility inspections, um, and you are given, I was given this long list of um, facilities to inspect, and I thought, okay, this is great. I've got this list, I'm gonna knock it out. I'm gonna do as many inspections for them as I can. And I was assigned the area that the terrorist uh, worked in. I think given the unique nature of this situation, a lot of emotions came to the forefront when help was asked from the very beginning. This was unlike any situation professionally that I had ever been a part of. I knew most of the affected plan checkers from the event and as such, especially when the unique nature of something like terrorism is thrown in there, for me personally, it, it, it really, made me want to help and it was something where I almost felt that it was a necessity. I decided to volunteer for San Bernardino assistance because I was born and raised in San Bernardino. I grew up there and a day or two before it happened I had just gotten an email from Robert Adams in the San Bernardino plan check office and I when I found out that he was one of the victims we were all really shaken of course we're shaken by all of the victims but that that really affected me to have that immediate conversation the day before he had passed away and or was killed actually uh, really compelled me to go and help if I could anytime any tragedy strikes somebody close to you 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 feel the need to help in this instance we certainly could step in and help since it was doing our job just in another county. Our whole entire staff has been very willing to help. Everybody understands what needs to be done and it, um, it does make you feel like you are making a, a positive impact. We don't grade and San Bernardino does. So learning the grading system as well as the challenges of posting grades is a big difference as far as Orange County uh, that we don't have to, to do that. So that was a real eye-opening experience for me since I've never worked in a county that does grading. Every day was a new day. We had to constantly reassess the situation and uh, our obligation to uh, respond to different events and reprioritize throughout the day uh, to meet the, the, the needs for the community and the department. Most days we didn't know what staff would show up. Jeff and I were there in the management positions. What was really needed was field staff, somebody to go back out there. Managing the, the data too was another challenge at times. We had, even though we use the same program to manage our data that they do, we use it differently in our jurisdiction. So even though we had access to their database, navigating it was a challenge at times as well. Probably the biggest challenge is, is understanding how this department does business. Under normal circumstances, 
but even more importantly, how they've had to modify their, their ways of doing business in order to, to deal with these, uh, what I would call, extraordinary circumstances. Coming from being uh, a director, uh, where you are responsible for absolutely everything, to working as a supervisor where I'm only responsible for a portion, you sort of have to adjust your, your thinking a little bit. And so uh, that's been my biggest challenge, actually, is to not just want to take over. <laughs> Probably the biggest challenge we had was training the staff quickly and well. From the beginning, we took a holistic approach to their training so that they had a good foundation. We wanted to make sure that they would not only be good inspectors for San Bernardino, but that they would have a solid foundation for their entire career. And we had to do this in a short amount of time. The whole incident is still unbelievable. Thought it was a drill when it started and still, in my mind, completely unbelievable. It never happened. It couldn't have happened to environmental health. It couldn't have happened to San Bernardino County. It couldn't have happened to us. There was, that doesn't happen here. To this day, I still find it unbelievable and cannot believe that I have to say I'm a victim of a terrorist attack. On December 2nd, I was at the incident that occurred at the Inland Regional Center. I returned back to work on January 4th. If you had asked me on December 3rd if I was coming back, the answer was no. But I did change my mind and I did come back and it was one of the hardest days of my life to come back knowing I wasn't going to see my friends. Came back to a new office a whole new life, a whole new experience. Sorry. Coming back in January was very difficult, but I think it was good for me. It gave me, it gave me something to do again, and trying to start healing. It was hard coming back to work and not seeing the people I worked with. Yeah. Knowing that I'm never going to see my friends again, that they were taken from us. With all everything being so horrific, there have been some positive things out of this and a lot of things that I've learned. Tried to be a better person, try to see the, the good in so many people that I admire, so many people that, that I know, that people that are here working, people that have not returned to work, the injured, think of them every day, the people we lost that were taken from us, think of them every day. Life has changed, life is different, but I try to focus on the positives. The people that are here, the people that still aren't here. The mutual aid staff, the contract staff. I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for um, everyone for teaching me and for being there for us, for being there for everyone that I can say that we really do appreciate it. And thank you. So my experience as a whole has been, I mean, it's been good. It's been great to see how other counties interact with each other. You're getting 
um, good feedback. I mean, there's people here from all over and so many different um, experiences. I had contractors crying in my arms. I had members of the public, owners and operators crying in my arms. Oftentimes, the first 30 minutes of my inspection would be just sitting there and listening to them explain how they had just talked with some of the fallen plan checkers, um, some of them a couple of days before. You know, people want to talk to you about it. They want to ask you about it. You're the first face they're seeing after the incident. Um, they want to relay to you stories of, of things that they've heard that have happened, people that had been killed, um, families that had been affected. Our presence there was beneficial to San Bernardino County, to the employees, to their department, to their community, and also to our own employees and our own department. It was a good experience for me overall. I was able to make new friendships and solidify some old ones as well. And uh, the, uh, along with our team, as, as they continue to work with their team, there's friendships that are being forged, professional relationships so that will be uh, beneficial for both uh, jurisdictions from this point forward. I think what I like to say about the regular employees is that they are very courageous fo folks. They've, they've been dealing with a lot of, uh, of issues separate and apart from work, but they've, they're very determined to make it work. So we are beginning to turn the corner and um, I think that it's, it's been working out pretty well. For us to get back to the root basis of what we do, which is serving the public to ensure that facilities out there are going to be operated in a, in a healthful manner, it, it, it was very, very good to see that despite the tragic circumstances, we could all come together and in, in a lot of respects come out better than we were before. I know that there's been a fostering of help between the two counties that I've never seen before in 15 years. And I think that going forward, the payoff is going to be that a lot of these counties are gonna to continue to work more closely and not be so isolated as they were before.